Good morning. My name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com, and welcome to today's morning call. Uh, if you do look around the world, you see lots of green arrows. You know, we walked in yesterday on Monday not knowing what to expect with the horrific terrorist attacks in Paris. Sediment was really gloomy, and then all of a sudden, you know, Europe didn't go lower, Asia hang in there, and then the U.S. markets, after a brief uh, spout of weakness, reversed hard to the upside, giving us that famous red dog reversal tactic that we all look for at certain times, which we'll get into a little bit. So this morning you walk in and Europe's up broadly. I think the DAX is up 1.8%, the CAC's up 2.2%, so everyone's uniting around um, the world, getting together to fight and get those, you know what, <laughs> ISIS, B-A-S-T-A-R-D-S's. Um, <laughs> I hope everyone could spell. Anyway, um, so, you know, that's providing a little follow through here. You know, if you look at the HEDJ, which is uh, the proxy for Germany, which we like to show as um, just what's going on in, in Europe. Um, you had your double bottom here, and then, you know, that first move up. It, it uh, got your first spout of selling right here. And then, you know, overall, you look back, and all we did is pull back to, you know, basic moving averages. I talked about 59.5 in the HEDJ, it went to 59.74 and turned up. And now you're probably getting a little follow through uh, today. So I don't know if all of a sudden it's going to break out above the prior highs here, but, you know, you're going to do, you're going to have this channel here, you know, which it's going to be in the upper end, and that could help provide a bit of a tailwind. As far as our markets are concerned, when I talked about uh, 2020, on Thursday into Friday as the 0.382% retracement of the entire 12 to 13% move is a good spot to target. Whether you just cover shorts, whether you position long, you know, it all depends on, on how you work it. But basically, you know, it held and you actually even had a chance yesterday. Okay, I talk about the red dog reversal tactic and you couldn't get a more clear one yesterday. Before I get into that, you have, you know, the low from August, your double bottom, and then, you know, you took out resistance here and then rode the eight day the entire way up. Now, you know, it's really just all about your timing and the timing has been hard lately because of all the computers. You know, if you um, sold the rally early, you probably were a little upset as it extended. If you started shorting when it seemed as if we should stop here, which was a decent level to, to stop at, especially after, you know, this down day and you didn't cover here, you might have been squeezed out before, you know, we wound up coming below um, the eight-day moving average. So anyway, from you know this high to where we are, were yesterday, if you do that Fibonacci retracement all the way up, you know with all the gloom, doom and gloom out there, you know really the only thing that took place was a, a 0.382 percent retracement, which was right here, which is still deemed a strong market. That means that from the low to the high, this is where buyers stepped in. So anyway, you remove that, and um, now you just want to talk about tactics. So uh, the red dog reversal is this, all right, after a multi-day pullback like we saw, we traded below the prior low of 2022 by three handles and reversed up. So some would just buy here, put a stop at the low of the day, and, you know, boom, you had a heck of a day. And then if you hold the third overnight, because that's what we usually say if you have a good mark, you know, you're getting some upside follow through as the, the futures are up six to seven handles. So question is, you know, was that it? You know, you, knew, you now have a descending channel right there and you have resistance right here. So if you were long, I would probably say, you know, into this 2065, 2068, you trim some. Some might actually even, you know, try and fade here, okay, for a, a reversal type move. So, you know, um, I wouldn't, you know, all of a sudden just buy the up open and think it's back to the races to the highs. But I also wouldn't just fade the first five minutes if they tend to push them. So, you know, this little spot here is 2068. That's this prior low. That's where all the moving averages converge. So this will be interesting to see if it gets rejected here or not. A lot of other sectors, you know, had the same type of situation where, you know, it pushed below a prior low, came back above it. If you were looking to cover shorts, that was your, your spot. If you were looking for some type of long, you know, in, in the Russell, uh, wasn't, it was one that lagged most of the day. But overall, you know, it did break below this uh, 113.66, put a low in at 113.36, uh, so 30 cents before rallying about a buck and change. But it's the same thing here. Look at the moving averages curling in. So that's 115.92, and then you have an unopened gap. So I would say this is your easy spot to rally to for some follow through. That's where you should trim. And then this is where you have your grudge match if sellers come in 
and remain in control. And that's where if you covered into this, this is your spot to reshort. Okay, if uh, you bought into this, this is your spot to probably sell. And I don't know if this rally is going to you know, last for two days or just the morning or whatnot, but that's kind of my thought process for you know, all of these sectors. You look at the Qs, it also had a, a decent reversal here, you know, went below uh, Friday's low, came back above it. But then, you know, here also, you can have a, a descending channel that is going to pose as some decent resistance. So into this, you know, 11260 area, you want to see if it gets rejected or not. So that might be a spot to take some off and look for a cute short. But, you know, this also could be, I hate to say like could be, would be, whatever, but could be, you know, a, a higher low. And then with some time, if it wants to resume, it could resume. It's just a day one tactic and you're getting a little follow through and then we'll see what happens, you know, from there. Um, let's take a look at the IBBs. Uh, they were pretty lethargic yesterday, um, you know, as it's still just, you know, kind of hanging in there. If you look at where it held, what it had held, that held pretty much this, sorry, this uh, prior breakout area that we, we played way back when and uh, still looks okay. You know, it's building some kind of, you know, wedge type process again. So maybe with some time it can go. Um, resistance here now is uh, 328 and then you have a really big one at 333. If you look on the macro sense of the IBBs, it's still you know, trapped in a downtrend of lower highs. And until that changes, um, you got to take trades. But it's getting tight here again, so we'll see. Interesting. So what also helped the tape was you know, high beta tech that got hit late on Friday all held the 21-day moving average. If you rewind to yesterday's morning call, I talked about the 21-day in Google, Amazon, and Facebook. As spots to watch to see after breaking the eight day you could probably short two there and then maybe look for some kind of reversal area you look at amazon you know almost to a, the t okay sperling played this one real well where all of a sudden you know you broke this you know you broke this most recent trend from the gap up after earnings right at the eight day then you had your push below the prior low and what did it hold the 21 day which is exactly what we talked about in the morning call so if you covered your short there or got a little long great now it's opening up four or five dollars. Do you buy it up four or five dollars? Probably not. Do you just sell it short because of the travel range? Yeah, it probably could work, but if you start too big too early and you try and be cute, you're probably not going to hold it. I know some people started buying Amazon at 632, 630 yesterday, and they capitulated it out into the 21 day, which is where the compelling spot was. So anyway, you know, um, if you bought it yesterday and you took some home, it's up four or five bucks, you trim some, and then we'll see, you know, whether or not you can get some kind of you know, maybe fade there. You know, Google, the same thing. Um, it also, um, you know, when, where did it go? Let's see the, the quinky dink here. Oh, what a quinky dink, right into the 21 day with the red dog reversal around the, the 639 pivot. Okay, so now we'll see, I guess, if we could take out this two day spot, you know, and go or, you know, or, or not. So I would sell some into the up open and maybe look for a cute short versus a 15, 30 minute high. Um, we also have the tape yesterday was Apple. Apple's been under pressure ever since that report, you know, came into support. You know, we talked about avoiding it unless it took back the, the 112.24 pivot, and that's what it did yesterday. Um, it happened real fast. It helped lead the tape actually yesterday for the first time in a while. So here is, you know, big support that it never made it down to. This was one spot that we had on the chart, and this was your other spot we had on the chart. Okay, and then this is really the pivot. So it took back this spot which was um 112.27 closed okay and i don't think it's off to the races i think that if you bought it yesterday you took some home it's up 60 70 cents right into maybe 116 ish you know what's this low here this low is uh 115.85 to 116 it's probably a better sell than a buy okay but again it's apple so sometimes maybe he just wants to go but i don't feel like we're in that environment but you know, so if you have it long and you had a great trade yesterday, you trim some and then maybe look to fade into this 116.20-ish area. Um, Netflix had a, a blockbuster move. Netflix, um, you know, this to me is a little bit different than some of the other names. You know, I know I was trying to be a buyer here and it failed and then all of a sudden, boom, what a sick red dog reversal yesterday around this um, 103.27 pivot. If you bought there and walked away, you got paid handsomely. Now it's up a little bit. I do think at some point, you know, this is going to take this 115 out. I'm hoping it's not today because it's going to be hard to buy today if it happens to be, you know, after the big travel range. But at some point, I think it gets through this and goes. You know, in uh, Chinese uh, stock land, Baidu's been acting really well. You know, Baidu, if you look at all the other pullbacks I just showed you, this didn't have it at all. 
So I, last time I had this on the note, it was all the way down here, and now it's digesting higher. I haven't been able to buy a stock high and sell it higher in a while, but perhaps Baidu is a candidate for that. Baidu right here is nice and um, in a nice little channel. It's at the upper end of it. So if this were to get above, just say yesterday's high of oh, 201.24 to 202, maybe that helps you know, and, and breaks out. We haven't had a, bear, uh, you know, a breakout in a while. Um, Baba, not the same, but you know, hanging around, something to do. You know, for those who missed the first move, we're looking to buy a dip. You know, it did come in, hold right around here, took out yesterday's high. But again, like other things, look at the, the size of the resistance coming in right here. So it's hard to get so excited after a, a rally day when you go right into resistance. You know, so that's about, uh, what is that, 80.50. So if you're long from yesterday, maybe trim some into there and then see if it goes sideways to then break the descending channel versus just getting rejected by it. I'm seeing a lot of that in a lot of these names. All, you know, red dog reversals could be up a little bit, but then lots of moving averages right on top of it. So it's, you know, hard to add on strength. But again, you want to see if they blow through those moving averages or get rejected there. You know, oil was good for the market too yesterday. Uh, had a, another red dog reversal. I guess it really was red dog reversal day. I'm sorry I wasn't at my desk for most of them. Upsets me a little bit anyway. Here is a 112.91, reversed hard, down a little bit today. See, it has to hold this area to stay decent. You know, it could come and retest this area that it broke down from, which isn't much higher. That's about 1360. You know, ultimately, you know, you do have a few stair steps in this channel. Um, the market liked when oil was above this spot, didn't like it below here. So we'll see if it gets reclaimed or not. The XLE did a double bottom and gave you a really quick move. Um, this, this sector's been broken, but it's given us some decent opportunities in the past um, you know, month or so. Here was your low. Here was your double bottom. This was your engulfing day. Move number one came back. Move number two, double bottom. So now we'll see if I guess if it builds off that. I would think that it's got to hold around 67-ish to continue. I don't think it just goes back to the, the high area, but um, you know, decent trade for some of you yesterday. Um, it's probably going to be flattish with oil down today. So what you want to do is you probably want to go to your five minute chart here to say if you missed yesterday and you're looking to buy a dip, you know, where is the dip on the five minute and the dip on the five minute, you know, this was that first peak, you know, and uh, so maybe somewhere around here. So 67.30-ish would probably be, or 67 right, right into this would probably be a spot because the moving averages will come up that you want to, you know, buy the dip versus, you know, buy strength. And that's kind of what we're seeing. Um, you know, I do read uh, J.P. Morgan's institutional note all the time, and you know they still think that it's like the 2011 template. How, you know, it's going to be rangy November and December, and every time it gets extreme to the downside, you buy like we saw in the last five six sessions down to 2020. But if we get back up to, you know, 2080 to, to, to 2100, don't think we're going to break out and go nuts. It's probably a spot to fade. So you know, you got to play the ends of the envelopes in um, some of the indices, and then hopefully there'll be some stocks that actually have decent patterns. You know, the oscillator was minus 50 on Friday, so that always tells you, don't be short, you know, but you got to find the right type of tactical entry long, and that's what, you know, the RDR did for you uh, yesterday, if, if you happen to be there for it. You saw a lot in the banks, too. You look at something like Goldman Sachs. Um, go that, that's a five-minute chart. Look at the nice trend for the whole afternoon. Um, you go to the daily chart, and you'll see that, um, you know, it did do um, the red dog reversal right around the prior pivot, which yesterday was why I put that in my note. I put, I listed every pivot low, because after one, two, three, four days or so, that's the way to do it. You don't catch a fall in knife where if it closes on the lows, because that could go all the way lower. So what you do is you pitch, you know, you write down the pivot low, it goes through it, people get stopped out, some people think it's going lower, they get short, and when it reverses back above it, you get a nice trade. So that was at 190.06. So now, if this takes out the two-day high, you know, maybe there's a, a bit more, but, you know, I wouldn't expect a huge move back towards these highs right away, but, you know, this is a start and, uh, and, a, and a decent day and a half trade if uh, that's what you do. You know, a lot of the other banks probably look pretty similar. J.P. Morgan, same thing, you know, held the moving averages, you know, turned up, and now we'll see, you know, if there's any kind of power there. And the metals, you know, you would have thought the metals would have exploded with all the volatility and with the unfortunate happenings in Paris, but... <laughs> the gold did not do much here. Still in the slower pivot. Um, still, it never even filled this gap. And um, I would say at a certain point, if, it, if all of a sudden, you know, things get quiet again and, and nothing pops up like this 103, 
you know, could get taken out to the downside. Remember that outside day when the Feds got very hawkish? Well, that was your exit. Okay, and if you exited there using technicals, you saved yourself a lot of pain back down towards these lows. So not much to do there. So in closing, you know, the question is, are we back to the races? Was this a higher low to then take us to new highs in the end of the year? I don't know. Was it a, a good targeted trade with oscillators oversold? And yes, it took some time to materialize because the first hour or two wasn't, you know, so clear. Basically, the, the times of the, the buying have been different lately. I used to be able to make my money, a lot of it between 9.30 and 11, 11.30, you know, and then get up and, you know, go take care of things, go in the media, um, go refresh at the gym, you know, go into meetings, you know, but now it seems as if, you know, most of the, the real trend happens between 11.30 and that 2, 2.30 versus the first hour, hour and a half, which is very erratic and wishy-washy. So I guess uh, programs change, you know, multi, you know, a few times during the course of quarters, and we'll see if that, you know, continues. Um, so with all that said, you know, give things a bit more room and just know your time frame and don't start with things too early. Again, a lot of people started shorting well too early and got squeezed out into the highs above 2100. Then some guys that started buying too early last week and couldn't handle it missed out on yesterday. So, you know, your idea is an idea until the market confirms it. When the market confirms it, you have to be clear headed enough to execute on it. Otherwise, it's all for nothing. So continue to work on it. We'll see what happens. Tune into the VTF. Hopefully you signed up for my webinar later where I'll go into in more depth into, you know, the Red Laurel Access product and, and also the, the Red Dog Reversal, you know, in many different time frames to, to keep you maybe a little more mechanical versus emotional. And so this way you can participate a little better. Have a great day. See you at the recap. Enjoy.